Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to yet another Throwback Thursday with me, Peter, the master of hoppets. And today we're kicking it old school with an episode that's been quite a while in the making. Actually, I tried to do this once already, but deleted the footage because the beer was crap. Because it was way over, was it like one and a half years old? Uh, but this is being rectified right now. That footage is not going to be released because it was not fair to the product that I know is good. And it's classic beer I hold near and dear to my heart. Today, guys, we're revisiting Schneider. If you don't know Schneider, it's, you must have been living on the rock, under a rock in the beer world because they are essentially one of the most well-known producers of Weiss beer in Germany. They're from Kilheim in Bavaria. And to me, back in the day, these guys, along with Weinstefana, made the best wheat beers, Weizen, Hefeweizen, Weissbier, whatever you want to call it, in Germany. I think they just, you know, they had such a in flavorsome and, and big flavor profile. It didn't taste like thin and mass produced as say like an Erdinger, which I feel like is one of the weakest of them or just like the really cheap ones you can get in the supermarket. I think we get, what's it called? Um, Kaiserdom Weizen. It's like, just it tastes like cheap Weizen. There's a lot of breweries in Germany that, you know, big brewers knocking out a lot of this stuff. And, you know, Schneider by no means is a small brewery, but to my memory, they've always, you know, make great beer. So what happened, I got this gift pack with three different bottles and this glass, I already had this one, which I wanted to check out. And then they're all like crazy old. I ended up dumping all of them. It was such a shame. Uh, again, it was over like a year and a half. And then I was a bit scared. And then I went to the supermarket again, looking at bottling dates and they were like close to expiring. It's like Weizen. It's essential you drink Weizen as fresh as possible. It's not a shelf stable beer style. Uh, it's so much better fresh. So what I did is I actually contacted Stefan who works at Schneider as their marketing manager and said, hey Stefan, how's it going? I completely failed in doing a video series on, or a few videos on Jim Schneider beers. Can you help me get some fresh? And Stefan was like, yeah, sure. I'll ship you some fresh uh, Schneider beers along with their new Helles, which you will have seen a review of already, which is really good. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit of a fun throwback because the first beer mail I ever got on the channel way back in the day was from Schneider Weisse. Uh, they sent me some of their beers after I think I reviewed their uh, original, their classic uh, Weizen, which is a bit darker. It smells like Banana City right here, uh, by the way. So this time around, they sent me a few different beers. We're gonna have Aventine is coming, don't worry guys. It's one of my favorites from them. And I've heard some people saying it's not as good as it used to, blah, 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 different things. Last time I had the Hopfenweiser, which is one of the beers we're trying today. Last time I had that on draft, I fucking loved it. So I'm hoping I still will. Uh, but we're checking out two beers today from them, two hoppier releases. And we're checking out their Schneider Festweise and their Schneider Hopfenweise. So the Festweise is tap four and the Hopfenweise is tap five. And the Festweise used to be called Mein Grünes, which because I think it was like organic or it was something to do with that. And it was also a more hoppy vice beer. Uh, and so is Hopfenweiser. Hopfenweiser is making a fairly hopped and lightly dry hop by Weizenbock, as it's called, which is, you know, or as they call Weizen Doppelbock, even stronger Weissbier. But we're gonna start with the Festweiser here. This is not like as death fresh, like this is really fresh. This is from around, uh, was it August last year? No, September. Uh, no, it is August. So it's not the freshest bottle, so keep that in mind. Uh, but I think Stefan sent this because he wanted, you know, to see me revisit this as well because he knows I'm a hophead and it's a more hoppy Weizen. So the th different thing was this is 6.2% so it's brewed stronger, which often is the case with some of these Oktoberfest beers. And what you might have noticed there, the beer got darker. I just poured some of the yeast in. There was still some yeast in the bottle. You do that with these Weiss beers. You dunk in the yeast. Usually I'd never do that, but you do that with these. Um, but yeah, let's move on to this one. If you hop onto the Schneider website and go into English, they have all the info you need on the beer. I love it. There's everything from gravity to hops to, you know, they just go into so much detail. So 6.2% is the ABV on this one. It's made with New Zealand Cascade hops and Halatau Tradition, certified by Naturland. And I don't really know what Naturland is. I'm guessing it's a German thing. 
They use organic wheat malt certified by Natula and organic barley malt. So I guess it's, yeah, it's pretty much 100% organic, right? And it's open fermented. It's bottle fermented as well. So that's why you have the yeast in the bottle. So that's what you call bottle conditioning in the UK. And it's non-filtrated, non-pasteurized. It's 28 IBUs. That's fairly on the higher side for Weizen. And a whole mess of six grams of CO2 per liter. I love this stuff. You can geek out about it. Six grams? That's a lot of carbonation. And the original gravity was 13.8% Play-Doh. See, that's how I want, you know, websites to be sometimes. It's awesome when brewers go so much into detail. But yeah, let's try and dig into the first glass of a Schneiderweiser product in quite a while. Actually, I think it's maybe just a little over a year, a year and a half since I had Aventinos last on draft. But yeah, I can't remember the last time I had a Mein Grünes or now known as a Festweiser. But as I said, it's nice and hazy. It looks a bit more brown on camera, but it looks oxidized on camera almost because it's like really dark brown. But in reality, it's a real bright orange with the light hold held up. It probably also looked a bit brighter just when I poured it. But yeah, it's an orange with a slight hazy, or actually quite hazy, turbid looking orange glow. Nice thick looking heads on these too, like tight bubbles. It's always a good sign when you get beers like this. Uh, so yeah, let's check out the aroma. Yeah, Banana Town. It's so funny because the last Weizen I had was the Schlinkerle Weizen, and that's the Smoky Weizen. This is how you, you can benchmark how you want Weizen to smell. It's a bit more hop-centric than a lot of Weizens, but I don't think it's overwhelming. And this one, I believe, was also... Is this one? No, this is, this is the other one. One of them is lightly dry-hopped. I think it's the... Yeah, that's the called chill-hopped, kalt gehopped. It's the Hopfenweiser, but... Yeah, it has a citric, sweet citrus kind of thing going on, which I'm guessing is from the Cascade. It smells like like there's a whiff of classic American old school hoppiness to Weizen, to be honest. Even though it's New Zealand Cascade. And then boatloads of banana. Loads of overripe sweet banana and like a nice hefty doughy, bready, wheaty feel. And underneath that, a nice clovey spice. Nah, it's a really nice balance of spice. There's even like a white pepper and almost like a little bit of coriander, which is usually only a bit beers, but I've rambled on enough. This is going to be a long video. Sorry for that, but hope you enjoy my nostalgic shenanigans. Let's give this a taste. Cheers, and thanks a ton to Stefan at Schneider for the beers. That's so nostalgic to drink. <laughs> even though this was never really any of my favorites from Schneider, uh, from, from Schneider, it's really tasty. It's so nostalgic. It's really, really bites and done right, and like to a T. I think, you know, this is a bit, you know, off the beaten path, of course, because it's got the hoppiness uh, compared to your average Weizen, but it's got everything else you want. Pronounced sweetness without being cloying, and then like big time banana. That overripe banana really shines on this. It's like just a banana that's sitting on the table for a while and just like gone a bit brown. That's what you get. You get like a really nice wheaty breadiness. I think I oddly missed this style. It's one of those styles that just just disappeared for me. And all of a sudden I wanted my spears. It's not like I've really been craving them a lot, but I just really wanted to revisit Schneider, and also a lot of you guys asked me to, especially Aventino, so it's coming, but yeah, this is good. It's got that kind of, it's almost like citrus grapefruity hoppiness from the Cascade. Really nice peppery spiciness to it. Mm. Spicy, peppery, grassy, slightly grapefruity, citric, big banana, phenolic, peppery spice that nice whiff of clove to overripe banana, as I said, freshly baked wheat bread. Full-bodied, very high carbonation, chewy, vice beer to a tea. But 6.2%, so you get a little bit more bang for your buck. More malt can be used, everything like that. So, let's move on to the tap five, the Hoffenweiser. I adored this freaking beer. I drank so much of this back in the day when I was getting into craft beer. This and Aventinos was my two favorite beers from Schneider and my two favorite rice beers. I really, really thoroughly enjoyed uh, uh, 
It might be fine as well, but I always felt Schneider was a tea better. But maybe it was just because it was a brewery I discovered first. I'm not sure. It'd be fun. Maybe that's something for a blind battle. If we can get a fresh bottle of Weinstefana Weissbier and a fresh bottle of Schneider Weisser and try and battle them, even though it should be Schneider's Golden Weisser, gold, uh, meine Goldes? Golden? I can't remember what it's called. But they do one that's light in color because they're classic Weizen. It looks like a dunkle Weizen, really. But yeah, I used to adore this beer so much. Weizen Double Buck, it's whole, a whole lot stronger. It's 8.2%. And again, this is dead fresh. This is uh, yeah, straight from the source. Traditionally hopped as it says, and cold hopped or chill hopped as they write. So dry hopped, I guess. And it's made with wheat malt, barley malt, open fermentation, and then, you know, it's got the same info. But this is 40 IBUs. It's quite bitter, actually. This towards Pilsner levels, which is very impressive. Wow, seven grams of CO2 per liter. Seven grams, that's a lot of carbonation. 18.5% Play-Doh. You know, yeah, it's pretty much double IPA territory, but it's a Weizenbach, it's a stronger wheat beer, so that's how it goes. We're using actually the Schneider Weisse uh, Aventinos glass that they kindly sent to me back in the day. I think I got that beer mail in what, 2010? Something like that. But yeah, this looks gorgeous. This looks a bit more like what you'd see in a, in the New England IPA style. Again, it looks darker on camera, but if I hold it up to the light there, uh, there you go. That's much better. It's probably a bit blurry. This is a bit darker, but I think it's also the shape of the glass maybe. But it looks more like that because I want to pull it back here. Well, they look a little bit darker, uh, even though it might have been non-focused or off focus. But yeah, it looks nice. It's like super hazy golden orange. I, when I swirl it, you can see streams of carbonation. The head really died down, but look at the lacing sitting in the top of the glass already. Let's check out the aroma for the first time in ages on Hopfenweise. Man, that smells so good. Oh man, it just, that is such a throwback. It really puts a smile on my face. The thing is like these beers, even though they're classic and they were some of the ones you started with, the really well done one of those, or, or, of those beers, they still hold up, you know? They're still really well brewed beers. They may, might not just be the new fun thing you're checking out as a craft beer geek, because it's all about, you know, fun and exploring, but going back once in a while is so fun, and that's why I'm really loving this throwback series. It is so bubblegum heavy, it's crazy. It's nuts, but it's also really hoppy. It's We've got a really interesting classic uh, a German vibe, like almost like a super supercharged Mittelfeu, but it wasn't Mittelfeu that was in there. It was definitely, it was Sophia. I think it's Sophia is actually, it's Tradition and Sophia. And I think Sophia is quite floral too, kind of like uh, Mittelfeu. And like that pair with bubblegum just works perfectly. It's like supercharged esters too, because it's a stronger beer. And loads of banana. But the thing with this is like, it is bubblegum town galore. Juicy fruit bubblegum type things almost, you know, like you find in New England IPAs. Just paired with classic hops. And like really nice and fresh and doughy. It smells beautiful. Man, this takes me back. <laughs> Let's give it a taste to see if it's as good as it smells. Cheers. Man, that is tasty. It is so creamy, so fluffy and creamy. I don't know if we should switch again. It's because I'm right-handed. When I do these beers <laughs> doubled up, it's easier to sit like this and drink and taste it. <laughs> man, that's good. It is a supercharged bubblegum beer. It's to the sweeter side, but man, it's really good. Um, it's really reminding me, you know, Almost, pretty much just an IPA interpretation, a double IPA interpretation of a Weizen, really, but with classic hops. It's really hoppy, and it's got a nice bitterness on the back end. It's fun because I don't think I remember really dissecting this beer in a long time, so it's really fun dissecting it. And look at the video, it's so long. I'm sorry for that, guys. Hope you enjoy the spiel of nostalgia. It's really carbonated, though. Got me going all burpy, but man, this is some good stuff. There's like a sweet, bready flavor. It's almost like brioche. Like it's like really sweet, or milk bread, Japanese milk bread. It's like this really sweet breadiness. Like, and really doughy. Paired with like huge bubble gum, which sounds a bit weird, and really nice bright banana. It's ripe banana, but it feels more bright, bright, and like, almost like cocktail-like. 
paired with like these classic hop flavors, which is like supercharged floral, like a supercharged middle floor or something like that. Even though it's a fear, whatever. I, I don't know they accept cross breedings for Saphir, but it just reminds me of a middle floor hop because it's so floral and, and bright. Then it leaves your aftertaste with some, in the aftertaste, like just a nice layer of bitterness and uh, like peppery spice, a hint of clove. I think I feel like it's a bit more peppery and, and herbal too, like a nice herbaceous touch to it. Uh, maybe even Holzig, woody, as they say in German, because of all the hops in there. But man, it's, I can't believe it's got that much bitterness to it, actually. But that's, you know, this is a fun take on a Weizen. It is, Weizen a Weizen Doppelbock is really good. I think back in the day, I might have given straight 90 to both. Um, that was before I got really into the grading scale. I think I will stick to a straight 90 on the Festweise. It's really good. Uh, it's a bit different than a lot of other Weiss beers. Uh, but man, the star of the show is Hopfenweiser, you know, that really outshines this. Mm. It just feels thinner and weaker, even though it isn't. It's just because I had a much bigger and full-bodied Weiss beer before that. Man, that was, this is actually a really good beer. <laughs> it is. And I'm not just saying this because Stefan from Schneider sent me these beers. If you follow the channels for the oh, 10 plus years I've been running now, um, you will know that this is a brewery that's been near and dear to my heart for years. And we're over 20 minutes now. I gotta wrap this up. This has been one of the longest throwback Thursday. We got so much nostalgia. Man, just you you guys just wait for the Aventinas episode. That's gonna be even worse. <laughs> Hopefully not, because it's just one beer. Well, maybe two, because we also got the uh, the Icebuck version. But yeah, really good stuff. Uh, 90 for the, uh, the Festivizer. And I'm thinking like a 93 for the, uh, maybe even a 94 for the Weizenbach. <laughs> it's really fucking good. I tie it with like the um, the Weizenbach I had from Sentner, but the one from Sentner is a bit more classic. It's, you know, much more really overripe banana, banana bread, like caramel, and like, it was almost like caramelized banana and stuff. It was fantastic. This is quite different. It's all, it's like an IPA interpretation of a Weizen, but it's fucking great. Uh, and I got a few extras, which is amazing. So I can get to drink this again. Actually, my girlfriend loves this beer too. So she's going to have some of this. But yeah, really, really good. So if you guys had a chance to try either of these two and revisit them, let me know what you thought of them. If you haven't, try. Especially Hoffenweiser. That is a cl class A, you know, different take on the Mites and Dumper Box. That's really good. Man, what a throwback. I love this. So sorry for the length of this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and stuck around for the entirety, even though it was hella long. But yeah, this was fun to do. If you guys had these, let me know. As always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and ring the bell for future notifications about videos like this one with throwbacks and nostalgia. Oh, so nice. And I'm going to say cheers in some damn delicious bites and Doppelbock that's assertive and hoppy, and say cheers, and see you guys. And another beer review. Or throwback Thursday for that matter. <laughs>